Do. Uh, I'm thinking of a, a, a passed away pastor, uh, Paul Ryan, uh, and you maybe heard this story sometimes, but when he was a pastor in Montana there, uh, he came, he was the first one, he saw an accident, a semi-trailer uh, accident, and the driver had lost his leg and was trapped in that cab. And he was there, and while they were waiting for uh, some help and emergency services, uh, the guy said, you know, what can you do for me? And he says, I can't do anything except for tell you about my friend, Jesus Christ. And he led that guy, <laughs> led that guy to the Lord while he's sitting there bleeding to death, waiting for the uh, people to come and get him untrapped from that. And uh, and you say, well, shouldn't he have been really excited and, and doing what he can to, uh, medically. Well, he knew what the Lord wanted him to do, and he did it. Uh, and so those cases, you just have to have the Lord's leading. And he wasn't, wasn't medically trained, and he didn't know what to do. What are you going to do? The guys, you know. So he did the one thing that every soul needs. He needs to know about Jesus Christ. And he told him uh, the, the story of what God had done for him and how he can be saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and then it doesn't make any difference if he dies or not. Uh, <clears throat> the end of the story was something some years later, he never heard what happened to that guy, just assuming he'd probably died. And a number of years later, a man walked into the church and said, you probably don't remember me. <laughs> Said, you're the one that led me to the Lord when I had a bad accident with a semi. And so you do what God wants you to do. You know, I've, always, I've thought about that many times when I've come on. I've been medically trained for search and rescue and for uh, basics, you know, for uh, all my life since I was in the, in the Coast Guard and, and different places that I was. But, uh, but that's always been one of my thoughts. Uh, I might not be able to save a guy's life, but I can give him eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so I wasn't ashamed to, to talk to people about the Lord. And of course, every situation is different. You just have to know what the Lord Lord, what do you want me to do? Well, he'll let you know. Will you do it? <clears throat> so here we see that uh, David turns and, and says, uh, well, what are we going to do here? What should we do? Uh, shall I go, verse 19, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into mine hand? He asked two questions. And you know, again, many of the big Bible chiefs and scholars from the universities and, and, and all the Greek and Hebrew people and everybody say, Well, well, you know, uh, the Urim and Thummim, it would say yes or no. And no, it would give answers. God would give answers verbal answers to you and how it was or spell it out or whatever it was you knew the answer not just yes and no here wilt thou deliver them into mine hand and the Lord said to David the Lord said to David he said go up for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand and so he answers all of his questions there and yes go David and I'm going to deliver them into your hand David came to uh, Baal-perazim, and David smote them there and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal-perazim. Uh, so David asked of the Lord, and the Lord says, I'll do it. He says, you just go. And so David goes, and the Lord did it. And see, that's the way we need to be. We need to be trusting the Lord. We need to be trusting God when he tells us to do something. And we just need to go do it. We have a missionary be coming through here. He's going to, by the way, uh, I heard from him. They're going to be starting their work for the blind and uh, those in need, blind, deaf, and so forth ministry. That's the, uh, oh, brother, I can't remember his name. Um, anyway, he's going to be here in June. They're going to be here to visit us in June. And so we'll be hearing more about, but they're starting their work in Walton, Delaware County, right over here. So he says, hopefully we'll be able to see you pretty regular. I said, we have people drive farther than that just to come to church. So <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> that's good news from them. We look forward to them being here. 
Um, uh, his wife, uh, let's see, it's Randy and, and Jennifer Cooper, and his wife is deaf, and she does deaf ministry, and they've had ministries to um, people of needs, people of needs, put it that way, it's a, a needs ministry, and they were going to start that in Ontario, Canada, and then they got put out because of visas, and so they, and the Lord changed them to New York. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to seeing them. <clears throat> Verse 21, and there they left their images and David and his men burned them. And so here, what's happened? Uh, he took, they went and slaughtered the Philistines and the Philistines images and idols are still all around there and, the, and so Israel destroyed them. Israel made sure that they weren't gonna be part of their uh, in, indoctrination. Uh, and we have so much indoctrination going on in the world today to, for wickedness and for evolution, for all the false things of life, uh, the humanistic philosophies and the Eastern religions and all these things that are coming into our societies around the world. And we just need to be uh, firm about teaching about the kingdom of God and what uh, he's called us to do as ambassadors for his kingdom. Uh, so he left the, the images there that uh, they all did when they were run off, and David and his men burned them. Verse 22, and the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of, of Rephaim. Uh, so they keep coming back. Now, they don't like that they're losing territory. They don't like that David is in control because they knew David. Now, only one king leader who happened to be from Gath, where the the Philistine giants were and where David uh, killed Goliath that was from Gath, that king believed David. Remember that when we would see that? And so he was a friend to David and he wanted David, he said, oh David, you're so wonderful, you're so trustworthy and, and I can just, uh, I like having you around because you take care of me. Uh, and then uh, he finds out, well, no, maybe that's not so. Here's David, king of Israel, he, he's not a friend of the Philistines. Uh, he wasn't then either, but he, was, he got along with them uh, when he had to. <clears throat> and the Philistines uh, came up again, spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, look at that, verse 23 again, David inquired of the Lord. He said, thou shalt, okay, David said, should we go? Well, yeah, but the Lord gives some specific instructions here, doesn't he? Uh, and so that's why you need to know what the Lord wants you to do so that you can get his special instructions and get his instructions uh, as far as what we need to do. Uh, he inquired, thou shalt not go up. Okay, well this time, no, don't go up, David. Don't just go out and confront them. But fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. So he says, no, don't go out there and hit them head on. I want you to go around behind them. Just sneak out there, take your troops, uh, you know, take your thousands out there and, and uh, nobody will know you're there. <laughs> I don't know how these soldiers did it back there in those days, but uh, anyway, they, they got around okay. He came over against the mulberry trees, he said, and let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the top of the mulberry trees. Uh, listen, God is telling David all this stuff through the uh, breastplate. Uh, so, you know, if it was Morse code or something, why it would have taken a little while. But anyway, here, I, you know, it just says this is what God told him. Okay, do you believe that's what God told him? Amen. Uh, the word says God told him this. And, uh, and he said, so then thou shalt be, when, let me start in verse 24 again. Let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, then thou shalt bestir thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. Now what if he'd have just hit him head on without asking God? It would have been a pretty bad battle probably. And God would have said, why didn't you just let me tell you? I'd go do it for you. And so God, David did. David went and asked him. He says, what, what do you want me to do, Lord? And the Lord says, well, don't go up. You, you, here's what you do. Go out and fetch a compass around. See those mulberry trees over there? 
um, across behind them. You just go in behind them and you're going to hear the tops of the trees rustling and, and the wind or whatever blowing through them. When you hear that, uh, that, that spirit, he says, that's me going ahead of you to take care of it. And so he, uh, he comes through there and he does, he goes and he smites, uh, the, they follow him. Then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so. Again, he obeyed the Lord. He did what God said. Uh, we have anything that we know that God says that we don't obey? You have a King James Bible? God says a lot of things in here, whether you're saved or lost. You need to obey him. You need to do those things. You need to do what he wants you to do. David did so, as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. Uh, so David went out, did with the Lord, listened to him, talked to him, asked him. Uh, you know, folks, I think that there's a, maybe we're not praying enough, we're not praying specifically enough. We need to make sure our prayers are open to the Lord and that we tell him what we desire, what would be best. You know, let us know. Let him have his will and his way, but know what he wants you to do. Okay? And so that's kind of where we're at today, I think, in our world with, as Christians. We just need to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And yet, when we have to speak the truth, we need to speak the truth. Uh, just as, as I shared with that boy that wasn't afraid to stand up for the truth in his school and was arrested for it. Uh, but still, what do we have to do? We might be arrested for some of the things we do, and it's right. It's right for us to do what we're doing. Uh, don't be arrested for doing wrong things. You know, <laughs> I was just thinking about a verse that I haven't <clears throat> used. I used to use this with our grandkids and a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, if I can find it real quick here. The Lord tells us uh, <clears throat> that we need to do Let's see, 2, verse Peter, 2. In 1 uh, Peter 2, verse 19, it says, For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Listen, that's thankworthy. If you suffer wrongfully, somebody falsely accuses you and you have to suffer for it. Somebody puts you in jail for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, listen, that, uh, that's the situation. If a man suffers wrongfully, we have a lot of Christian people out there with businesses that are suffering wrongfully. They're being arrested. They're being told that they can't, uh, if they won't serve everybody, uh, even against their conscience, if they won't do these things. We have medical people who are in the same fix, uh, with Christian medical people that are told they have to do abortions and, and go against their conscience. Uh, that's not the Hippocratic oath that they took to be a doctor. And they shouldn't be forced to do that by a government. But you see that thing. Now, verse 19 of 1 Peter 2 says, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God, uh, you're trying to do the right thing before God, you're doing the right thing before God, and you endure grief, suffering wrongfully. It's thankworthy. And look, go on here. Verse 20, for what glory is it if when you be buffed for your faults, you take it patiently? Okay, so you did something wrong and you're suffering for it. Okay, you broke the law that was a, just a, a simple thing that you should have uh, not done. I mean, you stole something, you, you, whatever it was. And, and so you go to jail for it and you take it patiently. Oh Lord, I, I stole that and I'm just patiently waiting in jail. No, that's not the point. The point is, if you're suffering for God for doing right, not for doing wrong, for what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults, you take it patiently? There's no glory to God in that. Uh, there's no glory for you. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Uh, uh, 
verse, verses that I have used with our, our grandchildren, with friends, with uh, in our, our many years of ministries, uh, with children, with adults. Uh, listen, just do right. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Joseph can probably help me. I can't. Who, who was it that said, uh, do right, do right, do right till the stars fall? Uh, so, uh, sen the senior uh, from Bob Jones. Who started that? Uh, yeah. Well, no, I, it, it was a, an old preacher. I, I can't remember. Anyway, what, but anyway, that's right. Just do right. Do right. There's probably been a no number of people quoted that. I've heard that a lot. Uh, but anyway. Uh, I don't know who the first one was, put it that way. I just remember this, that old, old preacher from Bob Jones before it went apostate was, uh, used to say that a lot. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, Bob Jones Sr., I guess, who it was. Whatever. Okay, so anyway, that's the whole point of this. Uh, don't get caught and suffer for something you did that you shouldn't have done before God. Uh, do, if you get caught for doing something for the Lord that he wants you to do, and you, get, you suffer for that, uh, well, God says it's acceptable with God if you take it patiently. Uh, that's kind of hard. Where are your patience? You know, I saw some of the preachers that were arrested a few years ago in Canada being arrested, and they patiently took it. And they went for the glory of God. And so that's the way we need to be uh, in our Christian walk. Father, thank you that you have given us your word, Lord. We can know these things. We, even in, all through the Old Testament, Lord, all through these men's lives, the, the life of David, Lord, and, and uh, how he shows us how to live today for your glory. And Father, help us to live right before you, uh, knowing, Lord, that uh, one of these days we're going to be with you. And Father, if they're not saved today, anyone that they would trust you, today is the day of salvation. Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou be saved. Father, again, thank you for this day you've given us, and we uh, laud and magnify your holy name. Thank you that we can see these things from your holy word. Amen. Let's take our song books. If you're wanting to stand after a long sit and spell, let's turn to number 300. You can stand. If you're not able to stand, we don't mandatory anything in this church as far as standing and sitting. I know it's hard for some people to, to sit too long, to stand too long. So uh, if you have to get up and walk around during the service a little bit, well, that's fine too. I mean, we used to have, you know, Brother Lee used to come up here with his back problem and right in the service, he'd just lay down up here on his back so he could stay and listen with his, and alleviate his pain a little bit, you know. And uh, do all for the glory of God. Amen. <clears throat> Number 300. More secure is no one ever than the loved ones of the Savior. Are you a loved one of the Savior? Are you his today? Amen. Amen. I hope you are. If not, well, talk to me and we'll make sure you are. We may trust. 
Nick, would you thank the Lord for the day that we've had here? Good to have you, if you're able. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the way you've watched over us through our lives, especially for the time when you sent the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and give us an opportunity to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and step through heaven and resurrection, which is the gospel, gospel truth. And since we know we have a home in heaven, we can just rejoice in that, no matter what we're going through at the moment. Let it be for your glory, for we glorify you. Yeah. And the least we can do is, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yes. And we all have something in common. We all have a testimony. If we're saved here, we have a testimony. And if we can share our testimony as we come, the opportunity arises. And Lord, proclaim God as King of Kings, Lord of Lord, and we're looking for it. It's coming. Lord, I thought it would come last week. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next week. The Lord is coming back for us, staying his church out, could fill that promise to be faithful and just and true like Jesus was and still is. Thank you, in Jesus' name, for this time together. Amen. 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 God bless you. Fellowship together. Amen.